I've just got to kill this man. This drug dealer had a simple philosophy, pay him or pay the consequences. I kicked his door in and I rushed him onto his couch, stuck the gun in his mouth and pulled the trigger. Plus, he didn't invent the barbecue, just the turkey fryer. Master Built's John McLemore serves up a plate of his patented baby back ribs. Well, welcome to this edition of the 700 Club. Terry's in the kitchen, except the kitchen is outdoors. I, I love an outdoor kitchen. Okay, <laughs> and you're going to have a cooker to cook turkeys or baby back What are you going to cook? We're going to cook all kinds of things. We're going to make some barbecue sauce, and we are going to just have a great opportunity to share with you some ideas that will make your barbecuing for the rest of the summer uh, a highlight. You're going to bring something to me, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Well, it seems like the Supreme Court is going to have to rule on President Obama's health care plan after the latest ruling in the 11th Circuit striking down part of the law as unconstitutional. Several other cases against the law are also working their way through the courts. Some judges have ruled in favor of the law and some against. John Jessup has this look at where things go from here. Of the thousands of petitions the Supreme Court receives each year, only about a hundred get to present their cases before the justices in oral arguments. And many legal analysts believe among the cases the high court will consider this term, recent rulings on President Obama's health care reform law. Here you have more than half the state suing the federal government. Um, I can't remember in, in recent memory, and when I say recent memory, stretching back uh, uh, well over 100 years looking at cases, seeing any case in which you had that fact pattern. The latest ruling by the 11th Circuit Court of Appeals addresses a central legal question. Can the government tell Americans what they have to buy? The court said no, striking down the law's requirement for all Americans to have health insurance, basically saying Congress was overstepping its constitutional power by forcing people to buy a certain product, in this case, health insurance. The court called the individual mandate breathtaking and expansive, with no limiting principles to confine congressional power. In the majority opinion, it states that Congress cannot mandate that individuals enter into contracts with private insurance companies for the purchase of an expensive product from the time they are born until the time they die. But the courts are sending mixed signals. Earlier this year, the Sixth Circuit Court ruled in favor of the law. An appeal is pending, which would likely affect other legal challenges concerning this law. If the Sixth Circuit case gets accepted by the court, the Supreme Court could simply go ahead and pull up all the other cases that are currently pending before the courts of appeals that it wants to hear. And almost certainly it would want to hear this case involving more than half the states. Because the law gives Congress enormous authority in the lives of everyday Americans, the justices may well be thinking about future cases and other applications beyond just health care. Some analysts believe the high court will strike down only the individual mandate, taking away Congress's ability to force Americans to buy health insurance, and that could spell an uncertain future for the rest of the law. There is a good chance that the Supreme Court will take a very restrained view, they'll cut out the mandate, and very very likely live, leave a lot of the other provisions standing. And that, what that's going to do is create uh, a, a lot of work for Congress and the President thereafter to figure out what they're going to do with the mess that remains. John Jessup, CBN News, the Supreme Court. Thanks, John. Well, Jay Sekulow of the American Center for Law and Justice is here. And Jay, uh, the American Center represents a couple hundred congressmen? Yeah, least. about uh, 84 congressmen in this 80. one, another group of 80 in another one. So collectively, yeah, a lot of 600. congressmen. You know, Pat, it's an interesting situation because you've got the 11th Circuit uh, declaring the mandate unconstitutional. The 6th Circuit went the other way. So what happens now? The Supreme Court's got to take it. This is sure. not a case the Supreme Court can avoid. We've got a major argument, September 23rd, D.C. Court of Appeals. So you're going to have the 4th Circuit we're waiting for. You've got the 11th Circuit, the 6th Circuit, and the D.C. Circuit. This case is going to the Supreme well, Court of the United States. Well, you've got the 4th Circuit here in Virginia, too. Yeah, we're waiting for that any, literally any day now. And, you know, these are close cases. It's coming down to two things. And I, I heard what you said on the program yesterday. It's the individual mandate, but now this issue of severability yes. is becoming front and center. It wasn't going to be. And now it is. Well, the old rule was that if yeah. one part of a law was unconstitutional, the whole thing fell. Right. Because the court wasn't going to say, well, this is good and this is bad. Yeah. But the 11th Circuit did just that. Went the other way. And <clears throat> interestingly, normally there's a severability provision in the, con yeah. in, in the yeah. act. So it'll say, if this is held unconstitutional, the rest of it applies. 
That wasn't in this. The court read an implied right of severability under the concept that when you've got a congressional act, you try to save it. Here's the problem with that reasoning. Yeah. I think they were wrong on that point. This, you take the individual mandate out of Obamacare, it cannot function. I don't think economically it functions Wait. anyways. It cannot function. So this idea that somehow you can you know, piecemeal and carve out the ones you want and the ones you don't want, it just doesn't work. Well, do you think the Supreme Court, when it finally, well, you don't know how the Supreme Court's going to come out on it. You, it's going to be, you know, here's my concern. We just had in the Sixth Circuit a very conservative judge, a guy we really like, uh, was a clerk of Justice Scalia, and he ruled that the mandate was barely constitutional. He said it's on the outer edges of the Commerce Clause, but he gave it authority. What's interesting about this, though, the Eleventh Circuit, there was great language. It said the economic mandate represents a wholly novel and potentially unbounded assertion of congressional authority. That needs to be the theme mm -hmm. of this case going to the Supreme Court of the United States. This is unbounded congressional authority. If they can do this, literally Congress can do anything. You remember out of the New Deal legislation, they actually uh, forced farmers to kill little pigs. I mean, that was, you right. know, in order because they said, well, there's too much agriculture and we want to get the prices up. And the court uh, struck it down, then they turned around and reversed themselves. Correct. And what you've got here, the risk with this case is walking to the Supreme Court of the United States six months from now or a year from now and assuming you've got conservative justices going one way and liberal justices going another. I think that's a big mistake here. We have to fight for every single vote in this case. But this bill has to go for two reasons. Number one, it is a huge power grab by the federal government. Oh, Number two, it is the largest federal funding of abortion in our lifetime. When you look at the legislation mm. and what's really allowed in this, this is an abortion bill. This should be called the Planned Parenthood Protection Act. Well, that's, of course, what the liberals have been doing. Right. They, they, they're, they're imposing themselves. But it's amazing that Obama spent all that time, I mean, when he should have been worrying about the economy, right. he spent all that time on health care. And look at the disaster for the, this for the economy is an economic disaster. But Pat, you picked on something yesterday that not a lot of people are talking right. about, and that is the severability issue. What we need to be communicating out there is, we now don't have just one issue before the Supreme Court of the United States on the individual mandate that I must buy the insurance, which is, an, uh, to me, an, a much easier case. We now have, because of the 11th Circuit, a second Several. issue, yeah. and that is, if the mandate goes, what happens to this bill, this mm -hmm. law, and does the law, as applied without the mandate, bury us even worse than Obamacare buried us, which is uh, as bad as it could be, but this could be worse. How many uh, uh, clients is the ACLJ? You carry all those congressmen? They, You've got all the congressmen. So all right. you're, you're, we've uh, got seven plaintiffs, all right. uh, including medical professionals, in the main case in D.C., so, and uh, I think it was 180,000 of our members signed on to a brief uh, that we filed. So it, it's, been, it's been a huge case. And my concern here is the battle is now just beginning. What happens in these district courts and the Court of Appeals, it's fun, but it's not the reality where it goes. From the Heritage Foundation, yeah. said, never have we had seen this many states, states attorneys general, and all the. 27. It's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. Never By history. the way, our good friend Paul Clement did the argument in the 11th Circuit, did a, a magnificent job. Uh, so we've got a good legal team. We've got Paul Clement handling the, the Fourth Circuit case. Our team's handling the D.C. Circuit case. Uh, good lawyers handling it in, uh, in the Fourth Circuit. We're going to see what happens. Sixth Circuit as well. Good teams there. But it's going to be, it's all going to the Supreme Court. And they'll probably, the Heritage guy was right. I think they're going to consolidate all. That law has got to go. It's got to go. Law, I appreciate what you're doing. Ladies Thanks, and Pat. gentlemen, the American Center for Law and Justice fighting for you. Support Jay and his folks. Pray for them. And we'll talk to you about some more cases they have. Thank Thanks, you Pat. so much. Thanks, God bless you. Thanks. Jay Sekulow, a fighter for you and me. Lee Webb has the rest of our top stories from the CBN Newsroom. Lee. Pat, President Obama unveils a jobs program for rural America. The announcement is part of his three-day bus tour through the Midwest. The plan includes more money for rural businesses through a small business investment program, conferences for businesses and investors, and help in finding doctors for small rural hospitals. The administration does not have an estimate, though, for how many new jobs the plan will create. The White House says it will not cost taxpayers any additional money. Pat, I don't know how they can make that claim. Well, everything they do is going to cost money. There's nothing that the Obama administration is going to do that isn't going to cost you and me money. But the, the thing is, if they would just take some of those regulations off, if they would just uh, bring in some certainty about taxes, but they have left the business community in a welter of uncertainty. And now he goes in the Midwest and said, we're going to have a, some farm co-ops or we're going to all talk to people about how to make things better and we're going to get the agriculture department involved. That's not going to do it. 
he is going after business big time. And for some reason, on the one hand, he talks one, one thing and he does with the other. And what he does with the other is hurting business and killing jobs. Not a good situation. Lee. Al-Qaeda's new leader is calling on his followers to continue to fight the U.S. despite the death of Osama bin Laden. In a video posted on militant websites around the world, Ayman al-Zawari calls America a, quote, criminal country that has corrupted the world. He also says the uprisings in Egypt and Tunisia have provided opportunities for the group to spread its message. CBN News terrorism analyst Eric Stackelbeck told me Zawari is trying to keep the flames of jihad burning. What I do think it shows, Lee, is that, look, al-Qaeda is trying to give the impression to the world that after the death of Osama bin Laden, they're not skipping a beat. It's going to be business as usual for their organization. What Zawahiri is trying to do here is project an image of strength and project an image that, hey, bin Laden might be gone, but the fight carries on, the jihad carries on. To hear the full interview with Eric, you can go to our webpage at CBNNews.com. Pat, uh, Eric also told me that uh, Al Qaeda certainly does not have as much bark, uh, as much bite to its bark as it used to, but it's still a significant organization. Well, it's not so much Al Qaeda any longer. I think Al Qaeda was spawned, if I understand it, by the Muslim Brotherhood. They have spawned many things like Hamas and uh, uh, like Hezbollah in Lebanon. These are outshoots of the Muslim Brotherhood, which is now presenting itself as very reasonable, very peace-loving, which is a front. They want to establish a caliphate. They want to bring in Sharia law. They want to control as much territory as they can. And every time there's an uprising and some pro-Western dictator, as evil as he is, gets overthrown, who comes in to fill the vacuum? The Muslim Brotherhood. So keep your eyes open and uh, just be cautious. But, um, you know, I know the Assad family was brutal and repressive in Syria, but the one thing about those Alawites is they did protect the Christians. If the militant Muslims get in charge in Syria, they will persecute. Same thing is happening to the Coptic Church in Egypt. They're being persecuted. Lee? Bad more consumers are paying off their credit cards on time. Late payments are at their lowest level in 17 years. According to the credit reporting agency TransUnion, the national credit card delinquency rate has fallen to 0.60%. That's compared to 0.92% a year ago. The improved payment habits come despite an increase in the use of credit cards. Experts say there are a variety of factors behind it. Tighter restrictions on credit card applicants and consumers simply taking out less debt. Just 15 minutes of exercise each day, each day rather, may be all you need to live longer. For years, we've heard that 30 minutes was the magic number, but new evidence suggests that being physically active for half that time still reaps significant health benefits. Researchers found that those who exercise just 15 minutes a day extend their life expectancy by three years compared to those with no exercise. Doctors hope the new findings encourage people to incorporate more physical activity into their lives. Pat? I am not going to settle for three years. I'm going for 19. Well, I would hope so. I hope riding <laughs> the horse counts as exercise. Absolutely. It does. Don't you think? Well, I would hope. Yes. I mean, I, mean, I, I think it's it especially, especially the way that you ride. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's very stressful. Uh, yes, absolutely. Well, anyhow, I, I, I get up uh, and I'm out at seven in the morning in my big horse. It's fun. It's just cool. It was 60. Uh, Nine degrees here. No, that is the secret to doing exercise regularly, to find something that's fun for you, that you can do, that well, you enjoy, and we'll go if, back to day after if, day. If horse counts as exercise, it's fun. <laughs> All right, Terry. Well, up next, months after the earthquake, Christians in Japan are praying for a spiritual awakening. And stay tuned for Bring It Online. It's the part of the show where we take questions from you, our audience. So if you'd like to participate, just log on to CBN.com and head to our live chat room. This is the information retailers don't want you to know, especially now. They don't want you to learn just how much money you've been giving away to retail markups on items you purchase for your home. All because you don't know how to buy like the insiders do at Direct Buy Club, the home improvement and furnishings club with direct insider prices. When you go to Direct Buy, you know that things are going to be a lot less than retail and um, you don't have to worry about sales. It's just you know, one price. 
and it's a low price too. I would shop around and, and, and investigate uh, and without a shadow of a doubt, Direct Buy would have the lowest price. Members buy top quality name brand merchandise from hundreds and hundreds of trusted manufacturers. So call the number on your screen now and we'll rush you your free visitor's pass to your local Direct Buy club and your certificate for a free 30-day membership. This is a limited offer, so call now. Tomorrow, she was a typical girl with an all-American family. On the outside, everything looked just normal. But behind closed doors... My father was actually a Satanist high priest, so he um, did all kinds of evil things. See what happened when she was old enough to fight back. Plus, Miss United States 2011 winner Ashley Smith, tomorrow on The 700 Club. Well, sharing the gospel is not always easy for the Christians who live in Japan. But after the recent earthquake and nuclear accident, many Japanese are reconsidering their lives. And as Gary Lane reports, Japan's churches are praying for a spiritual awakening, a shaking, actually. The church in Japan is small and getting smaller every day. The average Japanese church has 30 people, and many have fewer than 10 members. Church historian Mazakazu Suzuki says traditional churches are dying out. After the war, a lot of American GIs who came to Japan, who are Christians, but later came back to Japan as missionaries. So after the war, you know, the Japanese church grew a lot. Then after 50 years, 60 years, now a lot of pastors are getting older and now facing the time for retirement. Also, many uh, members are you know, getting older too. Suzuki believes God is using the recent disasters to open the hearts of the Japanese people. Businessman Yutu Matsumoto says the power of God restored his marriage after a divorce. I worked too hard, so I didn't much uh, attention to my family. Yuto moved to New York, where his Christian daughter visited him and invited him to see the Passion of the Christ movie on Easter. Later, back in Japan, she brought him to the church their family has been attending since converting to Christianity. And during the uh, preaching, I couldn't stop crying again, again. I don't know why, but right after the service, I went to Pastor Scott and asked him how I can become Christian. That was April 2004. I accept Jesus as Lord. It was the beginning of my new life. Two years ago, Yuto remarried to Kako, his ex-wife. Today, they have a harmonious relationship with Christ at the center of their marriage. And at work, Yuto shares his faith with his colleagues. Yuto invites them to visit Grace Tokyo Church, where he serves as an interpreter. One of the things that we have that a lot of Japanese churches don't have is just a lot of joy and a lot of laughter. I think that's what God wants to bring into this nation, that there is a reality of joy in serving God and knowing God. And we also uh, cater to the young people. We let the young people step up and take charge of the music, do our preaching. Young people love it. They want to participate in the growth of the church. The young people share God's love and sing gospel songs on the street, even when reprimanded by police. We just praise and worship, like basically on the street and let God move and touch people's lives. When, when someone stands right next to you, we just start talk to them and you know, invite them to church. These young Christians hope that through their involvement, Japan's older churches can be made young again and dying ones reborn. Wendy Griffith, CBN News. That's good news. Some years ago when we tried to have an initiative in Japan, there were an estimated 500,000 Christians in Japan, and we put on the, the Superbook and Flying House on Japanese television. We had 8 million viewers. Wow. Uh, so it, it was a huge explosion of, of knowledge of Christianity, but it's, it, you know, it falls off. It's a shame, but uh, it, they need the Lord. Mm -hmm. Beautiful country. Okay. Yeah. Well, up next, a bill collector you don't want to meet. I kicked his door in, 
and I rushed him onto his couch, stuck the gun in his mouth and pulled the trigger and click, nothing happened. You pay or you die if you're this man's customer. Find out why, that's next. Coming up later, he didn't invent the barbecue, just the turkey fryer. Master Built's John McLemore serves up a plate of his patented baby back ribs. When you look in the mirror, can you imagine erasing years of aging? That's what I used to look like. Lifestyle Lift takes only about an hour. See the difference immediately. I'm Linda. I'm 70 years old. Can you believe it? Call now for a free information kit. It's quick, affordable, and takes only about an hour. Lifestyle Lift, a breakthrough medical procedure that helps remove wrinkles, frown lines, and sagging skin. Call now for a free information kit. Consultations are free. Call Lifestyle Lift today. From the studio that brought you Fireproof comes a new movie about grace and forgiveness. You can never underestimate the power of grace. The Grace Card, available now on DVD. Go to thegracecardmovie.com. To listen to our top songs of the week, go to CBN Radio at CBN.com. Well, folks, yesterday... We talked about pornography. We talked about addiction to pornography. And apparently we touched a uh, chord in the lives of thousands of people. And uh, it was so moving that we wanted to share some of the calls we've gotten. So Terry, you have several I do. Pat Richard called to receive prayer for deliverance from pornography and said, thank you for praying. Uh, a gentleman named Alan called and said he saw the testimony about the husband who confessed his addiction to pornography to his wife and it spoke right to him. He said he had gone through some of the same things and is believing that when he prayed with us yesterday, it's all behind him. And then Umberto called and just rededicated his life to God. He's been struggling with porn and temptation. And how could you not in our culture? today it's everywhere it's everywhere well we had we had like 12,000 calls yesterday it was it was a real outpouring and uh, Buford has been caught up in porn struggling with it secretly and he thanks us for the testimony thanks us for the prayer Fred knew he needed uh, to uh, make some changes in the life he's been addicted to porn it's an addiction and it's a very hard addiction and we don't want to point the finger at people. We want to help people. God is not in the, uh, I hate to use the term business because he's not in any business, but he, he, he's not uh, uh, intent on, on condemning people, but he's intent on saving people. He wants you, to help you. You know, you said, I think, such an important thing yesterday, and that was don't let shame keep you from being set free. That's right. You know, that's how the enemy gets us. He, he makes us humiliated by our own sin. We're embarrassed to tell people about it. We don't want people to think poorly of us. But it's when you bring that into the light and acknowledge that you need help that you get set free from it and have a new beginning. You're exactly right. They made a show of them Amen. openly. Well, anyhow, uh, if you need help, we're still here for you. And I'm just thrilled at thousands of people who called in yesterday uh, and needing help, wanted prayer. We're, th we're there for you. We're there to help people. We're not here to condemn people. We're all sinners. And we need help. So we, it's a journey we take together. So just count on that. Well, something else. You don't want to mess with a guy named Eric Erhart, especially if you owed Eric money. He had a knack for getting paid, especially when he collected with the end of his rifle. I ended up psyching myself up one night and said, you know, I've just got to kill this man. I kicked his door in and I rushed him onto his couch, stuck the gun in his mouth and pulled the trigger. You didn't cross Eric Earhart, especially if you owed this big time drug dealer money. You have to build up this reputation as someone who is not to be messed with. And, and so and it played right into the rage I already had in me. That rage started early in Eric's life. His father, a self-employed commercial fisherman, injured his back and couldn't work for two years. His mother went to the government for help, but she was turned down. I was mad at my father. Why have you checked out of my life here at uh, 10, 11, 12 years old when I need you? Where are you? Where's my, where's my Superman? 
Um, I was mad at my mom because she couldn't pick up the pieces. She was not emotionally capable of picking those pieces up for our family. And I was um, angry at the system. And um, so, I you know, I began to steal. I began to do some things, uh, sell some drugs. I, I was going to uh, fix it myself. Eric's anger spilled out into other areas of his life. At school, he started fighting students and even teachers. Somewhere in there, I crossed the line um, where it was no longer even trying to be a good boy anymore. I'd embraced this lifestyle. I thought I was a man because of the drugs, the sex, the violence. You feel like a man, you're in a man's world, um, but I was a child. I had failed at several job opportunities and uh, was getting fired, hitting, beating up bosses. Um, and, and so I was, I was in a dead end. Eventually, he moved to the North Carolina coast, where an old friend gave him an opportunity he couldn't pass up. I thought that I had finally achieved some measure of success. Uh, I couldn't do it in the military. I couldn't do it with legitimate business. But now, with the cocaine trade, I've, I've achieved some level of success. And when customers didn't pay on time, he flew into a rage. I've done everything from take an alarm clock and bash a man's face in with it, beating a man with a baseball bat. And at every, at every turn, you could feel your soul just uh, hardening. But one customer pushed him over the edge. He continued to uh, just spread rumors in the community that he was not going to pay me, and I wouldn't do anything about it. He broke through the man's door. I stuck the gun in his mouth and pulled the trigger, and click, nothing happened. I told him, leave town or I'm gonna kill you. It's Christmas night, I'm gonna let you live. And I went home that night and, and I got drunk and I cried all night and I thought to myself, um, you really are crazy. So I began to think suicide uh, was probably the right way out. I really didn't have an answer, I was hopeless. I was, I was a hopeless man. The next day, his girlfriend introduced him to her mother, who put it to him straight. She said, has anybody ever told you that you're going to hell? And I was shocked. I mean, no one had ever told me that. I had, you know, no one had confronted me at all my evil with the idea that I was going to hell. And then she said, has anybody told you that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, come and died so that you could be forgiven of that sin? I had no knowledge of church. I had zero knowledge of Jesus and God. None of those things, were, those were all foreign um, ideas to me. But I knew that I had to do something. I had to turn my life around. I had to change my life. But he wanted to make one more drug run before trying to change his ways. He drove to New York and picked up a shipment of cocaine. But on the way back across the North Carolina state line, police were waiting for him. They find the drugs, the firearm. I just looked up and I said, thank God it's over. When he made bail, he went to a local beach and cried out to God. It made me decide that if, if there's a God out there, I better have a talk with him because I am a I am a deeply disturbed man. And I just start to weep and cry, and I start to cry out to uh, God, and I said, if you're there, you know, show me. Eric was sentenced to seven years. While in prison, he started searching the Bible for answers. I began to read the Bible daily, five, six, seven, eight hours a day sometimes, and of course the Lord began to reveal himself to me in that, and through that I came to faith in Christ as my Lord. Eric only served three and a half years of his sentence. He was moved to a prison camp, and toward the end of his time, he was given a six-hour community pass one weekend a month. He used that time to go to church, where he met Pastor Wallace Phillips. I was drawn to Eric because he, he seemed to have such a passion for Christ. We m made the effort to go out and, and meet with him in the prison camp and uh, had the occasion to talk about the things of God. He helped Eric realize that God had a greater purpose for his life. God has been uh, so faithful, he sent me a beautiful wife, has given me a lovely family, he has allowed me to start the Upper Room Assembly. We've seen him grow to a uh, tremendous ministry, doing great work for the Lord here in this community. I've been born again. I've been resurrected to a newness of life, and, and old things have passed away. And uh, behold, all things have become new. Eric was confronted with something that you need to be aware of. You see, anger, violence, work of the flesh, it's the work of the flesh. Pornography, the work of the flesh. Adultery, work of the flesh. Evil thoughts, work of the flesh. Enmity, hatred, bitterness.
the work of the flesh. And you see, the flesh is going to hell. That's what's so important for you to realize, that if you don't stop living the way you're living, those of you who are doing this sort of thing, you're going to hell. And what's hell like? Let me tell you, it never ends. You can't die. People in hell can't die. And the torment goes on forever and ever and ever and ever and ever without ever having a moment's rest, a moment's peace, a moment of joy, a moment of light. None of that ever, ever. That's what hell is like. It's terrible. And those of you who are engaged in sin, you think, well, I'm going to get away from it. Or the Bible says there's pleasure in sin for a season. Yeah. Well, you're in that season. <clears throat> but what happens if the season stops? And there you go. You know, it's like musical chairs. What if it stops when the, the music stops on you? You never know. You and I, I can't guarantee you the next minute. You never know if you walk out of where you are, you get hit by a car, something will fall on your head, uh, you'll fall down and hurt yourself, you'll catch some disease. It goes on and on and on. There's so many things that happen to all of us. But Jesus Christ says, I, am, I died that you might not go to hell. I died to keep you from hell. I died that you might spend eternity with me. I'm talking about joy unspeakable. I'm talking about peace. I'm talking about love. I'm talking about something that's so incredible, words cannot express it. Eye hasn't seen, ear hasn't heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man what God has prepared for them that love him. You don't know. And I'm offering you right now bliss, joy, paradise. Or, the other hand, torment, hell forever, without ever end. World without end, amen. Which one would you want? If I were you, I'd choose life. Whatever you're doing, you're having an adulterous affair, you're, you're living in immorality, you're engaged in fornication, you're engaged in drug addiction, you're engaged in drunkenness, you're stealing from people, you're hurting people, you're lying. Would you want to keep that up and go to hell? If you got any sense, you'd say, no, I really don't. Pray with me now. I'm offering you the way out. Pray these words, and let's call upon the Lord. And whoever will call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. These words, Jesus. Pray with me. Jesus, you know my heart. Lord, you know the stuff I'm doing. And I confess to you that I am a sinner. I've sinned against you, and I ask you forgiveness. Right now, I'm sorry, Lord. Please forgive me. And Lord, I know that you died to save me from sin. And so at this moment, I offer you my heart, I offer you my life, and I take you as my Savior. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for hearing me. Thank you for opening the door to heaven for me. From this moment on, Lord, I'm yours. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. You prayed with me that prayer. My, what an important prayer that was. And I want to give you something to memorialize it because you just started. And uh, I've got something in here that tells you what you just did. An exchange life. You've been born again, a new beginning. Don't be afraid to say what God's done for you. I'll give you this free. You really want to have it. And I've got a scripture that goes along with it. It's called A New Day, and I'll give it to you free. Pick up your phone, call in, and say, I prayed with Pat. I gave my heart to Jesus, and I am going to heaven. Don't be afraid to say it. I'm going to heaven. I'm going to spend eternity in paradise with Jesus Christ. 1-800 is a toll-free number. 1-800-2, oh, excuse me, 759-0700. 1-800-759-0700. Toll-free number. Pick up the phone call. 
angels are rejoicing. Well, we're going to switch to something a little lighter on this show. Uh, I don't know if it's lighter or heavier, but... Uh, <laughs> But Terry's it's good. Out. It's good. Out of the cooking. All right, tell us. Well, we are out here with John McLemore and a delicious plate of baby back ribs. It's a combination for the perfect summer recipe. He's going to show us how, and that's all coming up next. Stay with us. Ooh, we look at that. <laughs> yeah. Looking back over everything that had happened in my life. And in running from God and thinking that he wouldn't forgive somebody that had done the things that I had, um, how stupid I was. That was the most miserable time of my life. Couldn't do enough drugs and I couldn't do enough alcohol to make it stop. For the first time in this whole ordeal, I prayed, Jesus, fix me. The guilt, the addiction, it's all gone. There's everything in trusting God. Just take that one step, that's all it takes. My name is Roger Stump and I'm a cancer survivor. The surgeon said, it's inoperable. It's already in your liver. My wife, Brenda, sat there and cried. And I'm thinking, I can't die right now. I'm only 52 years old. I was so distraught. I've heard Cancer Treatment Centers of America had experience with pancreatic cancers. It was like night and day. The hospital just breeds an environment of hope. You'd get a CT scan, and the next morning, the results were read to you. We'd go up there. I just knew it was going to be a good result. You could just see the joy on Dr. Granick's face. Call now and we'll show you how the most compassionate people anywhere put you at the center of everything we do. Together, we'll explore real treatment options you may not even know exist. Cancer Treatment Centers of America is such a different place because they give you hope. I would strongly urge you to call them and, and get a second opinion. Please call today. Welcome to Washington for this CBN News Break. The leaders of Germany and France are working together to address Europe's debt crisis. German Chancellor Angela Merkel and French President Nicolas Sarkozy are taking the lead in pushing for economic reforms. The two countries account for almost half of Europe, Europe's economic output. These meetings come after a week of trouble for the European and world financial markets. A judge in Indiana declines a request to block the state's new school voucher program. Teachers and some religious leaders were seeking an injunction against the vouchers, claiming they violate the state constitution by providing public money to religious institutions. The judge denied the request, saying the program is, quote, religion neutral, and taxpayer money will only be paid to religious schools when a parent chooses to do so. Well, you can always get the latest from CBN News by going to our website at cbnnews.com. Pat and Terry will be back with more of the 700 Club right after this. Coming up later, our chat room is open and we want to hear from you. We'll bring it online with your questions, so don't go away. Obamacare is not only going to ruin our health care system, but it's going to put us so far in debt we will never recover. Perhaps worst of all, it was concocted in an undemocratic process, in locked rooms in the middle of the night. Obamacare was passed and rammed down the throats of the American people. In January, after we delivered petitions to the House, they voted to repeal. Now the Senate is only four votes short of repeal as well. It's critical that you call today and add your voice to the new U.S. Senate petition. Even if you've signed a petition or made a call, do it again and ask your friends to do it again. We don't want them to ever think that we're giving up so that they can give up. Call 1-800-488-8017 or go online to repealitnow.org to sign the official petition. Together, we can force Washington to repeal this costly and destructive law. Call 1-800-488-8017 now. When you look in the mirror, can you imagine erasing years of aging? That's what I used to look like. Lifestyle Lift takes only about an hour. See the difference immediately. I'm Linda. I'm 70 years old. Can you believe it? Call now for a free information kit. It's quick, affordable, and takes only about an hour. Lifestyle Lift, a breakthrough medical procedure that helps remove wrinkles, frown lines, and sagging skin. Call now for a free information kit. Consultations are free. Call Lifestyle Lift today.
Well, Masterbuilt has always been a family business. Even when Dad was working at Goodyear and Mom was employed full-time at a car dealership, eight-year-old John would load up the wagon and sell products around the neighborhood. Decades later, John is now the CEO, but Masterbuilt is still committed to the same principle as always, helping you make the best dad gum food you've ever tasted. Maybe you're a little intimidated by grilling out, or can't get inspired to cook anything except hamburgers and hot dogs. John McLemore has worked at Masterbuilt, his family business, for 30 years. They're known for their outdoor grills, smokers, and turkey fryers. In Dead Gum That's Good, John shares how their backyard business turned into so much more and gives you some secret techniques to take your outside grilling and smoking to a whole new level. Well, John McLemore joins us now with his 30 years of experience. It's great to have you here. It's great to be here, Terry. Love it. Tell us how this whole thing started for your family. Yeah. Well, my dad, Dawson McLemore, started the company in our backyard. The old story of a family business starting up. Uh, he was a Goodyear tire uh, uh, rubber salesman. And he wanted, like every other man, to be his own entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. So we spent three American years. Dream. It's the American dream. Three years in the backyard. A lot of hard work, sons working there with him, and hence, almost 40 years later, we're wow. a worldwide company and we owe it all to dad. Wow, that's an awesome so, story. I, I love stories of families yes, that have taken an idea and run with it successfully. Mm -hmm. When right. you were 13, I mean, you started in this business when you were very small, but yes, when you were 13, you actually had an accident that was I, pretty serious. I, I did. My brother Don and I always worked in the shop, and I was always the one that was always getting in trouble. Well, I took some of that trouble into the shop. And I did. I had a very bad accident with my arm. What'd you do? Um, I actually got into a fight with what we call a big grinder. Ooh. And um, I won most of my fights. I didn't win that one, Terry. Yeah, so, wow, but you've got uh, the use of your arm I today. did. A... And, you know, that's, that's just one of the things that God has taken care of us on. Our company has been through a lot. That was just another example of how God's grace has been on our company. Well, I was mentioning the, the various machines that you sell. Talk about the name Masterbuilt. When did, where did that come from? Great story. Um, uh, my dad had the company started out as m and Welding, okay? And it was for Macklemore and Macklemore. And as we grew from the backyard, a big, you know, small welding shop, he wanted something a little bit more for the public and getting into the consumer goods products. So he said, you know what? We're going to be building products. We're going to need the help of the master. So he put together Amen. the two and came up with Masterbuilt. Well, I love the fact that, that your machines really encourage people mm -hmm. to do that whole outdoor That's right. enjoyment of family being together. That's you've right. got grills, you've got fryers, you've got smokers, yes, the whole thing. But and today... Today, it's all about the electric smoker. That is if, a beauty. If you can use your oven, Masterbuilt has taken the intimidation factor out by allowing you to smoke great food. People that have never smoked, love the Masterbuilt smoker. People that have been smoking all their life love it because it still gives you that championship style barbecue smoke infused flavor. It's all about the flavor. I just want to say this is the kind of smoking that's good for your health. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That, it is good for your health. What are we yeah. making here today? All right, this is one of my signature dishes. Now, we, we want to take the ribs. I'm going to show you how to get Ooh. baby back ribs on. Real awesome. simple, smoke infused mm -hmm. flavor again. We're going to do an espresso barbecue sauce, okay? Real simple. You know, on the teas, we had some olive oil in there and we had some minced garlic. We've got that uh, blending together and we're gonna put in our ketchup, one cup. Ooh, we're gonna put in some honey. honey. Love that honey barbecue flavor. Can I yes, ma'am, you can take that right there. This is one cup of balsamic vinegar. Okay. Okay, this is one quarter cup of soy sauce. And then I understand you love coffee. I do love you coffee. You do love coffee. <laughs> this is a quarter cup shot of espresso coffee. Okay. Awesome. Now, now, if you don't have Starbucks coffee in your cupboard, make your own home brewed really strong coffee, okay? Okay. Now, we're going to put that on a medium heat and blend that together while that's simmering up. Here's the secret. On your baby back rib, Terry, we want to take the membrane off the back. That's it simple. It peels off. That it does. Wow. Sometimes those can be a little temperamental. This one was easy. Discard that. We do that because that membrane can sometimes be tough, tough and it allow your seasonings to get into the rib. We're going to do some quick pepper. Get my salt over here. Just some sea salt. So you're salt. just kind of rubbing that. Rub that, the salt yes. and pepper okay. onto both sides. 
Okay, flip that over. Get salt and pepper on both sides. Now, we're gonna take this, open up our master built smoker, okay? Get that door to open. Now, one thing you Ooh, wanna do, Terry, notice that. we've got some shrimp. We've got some Cornish game hens. We're gonna put that on the bottom rack. If you put new food on, put it on the bottom rack so that it doesn't baste onto your... The other food that's yes, cooking. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Now, I'm gonna put some different gloves on here. These are heat resistant are, gloves. The intense gloves. Yeah, Don, my brother, <laughs> says these are my superhero gloves, so that's for you, Don. All right, these ribs here, now look at how that oh has caramelized. We're going to take that off of that platter wow. there and put that right there, Miss Terry. I wish you could smell this, y'all. I mean, yeah. it's like... You know what I love about what you just said? I wish y'all, y'all... Yeah, and I'm a northern this. girl, but when I get around this, I start talking like that. That's right. <laughs> Now, this barbecue sauce here oh, wow. has already been going. That's so that in the finished form, That's yes. exactly right. Now, just baste that onto these ribs. Oh. I'm going to do that real quick for you. Now, what we've done here is we've actually basted these earlier. And what I want to do is take these ribs with the basted barbecue sauce, espresso barbecue sauce. We're going to open the smoker one more time. Put them back in. And put them back in, but I'm gonna save one of them out. Now what we're doing there is we're gonna baste that barbecue sauce on for one more hour, ah. okay? We preset the Masterville smoker to 225, and it's just like your oven. You never have to worry about adjusting it, no stoking it, get smoke infused flavor. Everything's perfect. That easy, I'm gonna turn That's this awesome. down. That is here. awesome. Okay, now I want you to try I was hoping this. you'd say that. <laughs> In fact, this is how we do it down in Georgia. So if you're going to be like Georgia, this is yours. Could I be like Wisconsin? Could you just kind of bite it off for me? I'm going to be nice. <laughs> Thank Ms. you. Miss Terry, and I'm going to cut you off a piece right there. There you go. I'll eat that one. You eat that one. Oh, my gosh. Now, so is it tender, juicy, flavorful? That's the best Speeches. I've ever had. Is it? See, that's oh important gosh. for me. I love Pat, hearing I'm that. I'm going to try to get one of these in there for you. You really need, oh my word. So. That is just awesome. The, hey. thing that, the thing that we've done is we have taken these recipes. You want to spend time wow. with your family and friends instead of having to stay with the smoker. Masterbuilt's made it so easy. We put the food on, go spend time with our family and friends, enjoy. By the time you take the food out, it's like and this. And still Can I tell have dad gum good food. You really do. I, yes. I want to mention that you have a fabulous cookbook. Yes, and in this cookbook are all of these other recipes. Mm -hmm. Look what they've smoked here. They've got shrimp. You mentioned the Cornish hen or the Game chicken. Hens. Yes, ma'am. You've got asparagus. Mm -hmm. You've smoked cabbage. Mm -hmm. I've I've never heard of such a thing. Yes, ma'am. But it's all fabulous. Before I mention the cookbook and where people can get it, I want to say hello to your mom because yes. you were supposed to be with us a few days ago. She yes, had some very very serious mm -hmm. surgery and woke up this morning for the first time since last week. Since last Thursday. Just in time so. to see her son. That's right. Saying this dad gum good cooking is so, <laughs> from yeah. Master Bill. I will yes. tell you, our mother has been our rock. Mm. Our dad started the company. Um, we wouldn't have what we have without the Lord. Certainly wouldn't have it without my parents. So we are all praying that my mother yeah. continues to get better. Well, Boots, we wish you the best, and we've been yeah. praying for you. We'll continue to do that. want you to know we have recipes for John's ribs. We have a fact sheet for you. You can get that mm -hmm. by logging on to CBN.com. If you want to know more about all these fabulous things we've talked about, get John's book. It is called Dad Gum That's Good. And I'll tell you what, Dad Gum, it is good. <laughs> this is available in stores nationwide. Thank you so much. Thank Great to have so you with right. us. Until yeah. your mom, we send welcome. our blessings, will. William. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Pat, I'm trying to bring some back for you. You'd better. Boy, did that ever look good. My goodness gracious. You didn't tell us how to get those cookers, but I guess somebody will. Maybe it's in the cookbook. Masterbuilt.com. <laughs> We've got all of our retailers on there. Or dadgumthatsgood.com. There you go. For Christmas, right, Pat. Whatever. For Christmas. <laughs> Woo. Well, coming up, your questions from our live chat room. Ann says, our daughter is dating a boy we don't approve of. We don't think forbidding her to see him will work because She'll just do it behind her back. What should I do? Bring it online with Ann's question and more when we return. Dear Bowflex, I dropped eight dress sizes, 36 pounds, and all I had to do was walk. 
This is the Bowflex Tread Climber Machine, the easiest way to walk and burn up to twice the calories in less time. By combining the motion of a treadmill, a stepper, and an elliptical, you get the calorie burning benefits of all three workouts at once. I lost 30 pounds in four months. If I can do it, anyone can do it. Call now for your free DVD and information kit. You'll see how the Tread Climber burns up to twice the calories of a treadmill. Plus, you'll learn how you can own a Tread Climber machine today with special financing for 18 months. Within the first couple of weeks, I started to lose inches. I lost 50 pounds in three months using the Tread Climber. Call or go online to buytc.com for your free info kit. We'll also send you the Bowflex Insider's Guide with a personal fitness assessment to help you jumpstart your Bowflex body today absolutely free. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Bowflex. Sincerely, J.D. Weber. Tomorrow, she was a typical girl with an all-American family. On the outside, everything looked just normal. But behind closed doors... My father was actually a Satanist high priest, so he um, did all kinds of evil things. See what happened when she was old enough to fight back. Plus, Miss United States 2011 winner Ashley Smith, tomorrow on The 700 Club. Well, most of us can't imagine the poverty that some people face in the third world countries. In parts of Cambodia, something as simple as a bed is a luxury many can't afford. 15-year-old Veeble fills his days with chores, school, and homework. If there's a little time left over, he plays some soccer with his friends. At the end of the day, he's exhausted. Until recently, this thin mat on a wooden floor was the only bed Veebel has ever known, and he's had to share it with the other kids at the orphanage where he lives. The floor hurts the bones in my hip and back. It's hard to fall asleep. I'm stiff, and my body hurts in the morning. Veebel came to live at this Christian orphanage in Cambodia after his parents died. The pastor who runs it cares for the children as best he can. He mostly loves teaching them about the God of the Bible. Bebel remembers the day that he prayed to receive Jesus as his savior. He also recalls how the pastor challenges them to trust God for all their needs. We pray for the needs of the orphanage every day. I remember we asked God to provide beds for all of us. We didn't know where they would come from, but I knew God would provide. Those prayers were answered when CBN's Orphans Promise gave the children 40 new bunk beds. For the first time, everyone has beds to sleep on. And for Veeble, there are no more back pains, no more sleepless nights. I was amazed by how God answered our prayers. I have never had anything this nice before. I sleep very well now. Thank you, CBN. We care about people. We care in your name about people, people who are suffering, people who are hurting. We can't reach them all. We'd like to, but we can't. But we can help as many as we can. And you can do it through Operation Blessing, through the 700 Club, through Orphan's Promise, through all the things we do. And how do you participate? Just join the 700 Club, 65 cents a day. Money you probably waste on, you know, nonsense in our society. We, we blow 65 cents a day pretty easily. So you can change the world, $20 a month. So if you join the 700 Club, I want to send you something. We were talking about earlier today about life beyond the grave. These are some people who actually went to hell, actually went to heaven, and uh, they'll tell you what it's like. Yeah. It's, they're fascinating, real-life stories. So we'll give these to you. Uh, to pick up your phone and call and say, you can count on me as a member of the 700 Club. And before I go any further, my dear co-hostess has I come, come bearing gifts. Bearing gifts. Now you are from Wisconsin, and you are eating a Georgia rib. I know. Well, we 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 do eat ribs in Wisconsin. <laughs> you eat ribs in Wisconsin? <laughs> do you? But I'm telling you, that is phenomenal. Mm. I mean, yep. You're gonna here. Let me get you a Kleenex here. Oh my goodness gracious! I mean, really. Is it not fabulous? Mm. It, it's melt in your mouth, and I'm sure some of that's because of that st that um, smoker. You know, it's just getting the meat like mm. perfect. I know. You probably want me to finish out the show while you finish out the ribs, huh? <laughs> Man, it is so good. I mean, it's fabulous. It's mm. folks, you gotta get it. You gotta get the cookbook. 
really got to get the smoker. I think I want one of those on my backyard. You have to plug that thing in. It's electric, huh? Mm -hmm. Okay. And you plug it's, but it it does a lot of food at one time, and you can keep, you know, moving it up and adding new stuff to the bottom. That it's is fabulous. So good. Yeah, and the. The sauce he made, what I love about the cookbook, it's got all the sauces in it, tells you how to make all the seasonings, how to put them all together. It's a fun They're cookbook. They're brilliant. Smoky Bones, you've got a competitor, baby. All right. <laughs> questions. Okay, we've got some live chat questions. This is Brian who says, yesterday, you answered a question about a seven-year-old boy who heard voices in his head telling him to stab his mother. You mentioned that this might be a case of demonic possession. How do children as young as this become possessed? They can become possessed from the mother's womb if the mother, father had been involved in satanic activity. It, open door. it opens the door. Even if a grandmother, great grandfather had been involved, Satan feels he's got an entrance and he'll take possession of those children. No question. Yeah, it's yeah. happened many times. I know it sounds terrible, but it's the way it works. What else? Yeah, this is Anne who says, our daughter is dating a boy we don't approve of and we've told her so. She lives with us, but we don't think forbidding her to see him will work because she'll just do it behind our backs. Please help. i tell you what, use reverse psychology. Tell her, bring the boy to the house. We want to have him meet us, you know, have dinner with us. Let's see how he behaves in the context of your family. and. They don't have to do anything to embarrass him. Right. Love him. See what happens. And pray. And you know, one yeah. of the things she's right about not forbidding her, because you want to keep the door open to communication so that you can share your concern, mm -hmm. loving concern, about why you don't but, feel but positive about she this. She is not that stupid. She'll see if this guy really can't handle it. I mean, a, a social situation with your family. I mean, it, it'll, it'll be painfully obvious to her. It should be if it's not. I mean, hey. Then you try something else, but call me after you try that. <laughs> <laughs> Do that first. <laughs> Take two pills, go to bed. If it doesn't work, I'll give you another prescription. Yeah. What? This is David who says, Pat, a comet called Elenin will come close to Earth this fall. I heard some people say that Elenin, or however you say this, has already caused the earthquake in Japan and that it's going to cause another one. Is this a sign of the end times? I don't think so. I, I think uh, there, there have been comets and more comets and things going on back mm -hmm. and forth, and I, 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 I hate to ascribe certain planetary things. I don't know that much about saying one way or the other, but I, I, I've never heard that considered uh, as a sign of the end times. This is Jeannie who says, my son told me that once he blasphemed the Holy Spirit, since the Bible says that's the unforgivable sin, he believes God has cut him off. He's remorseful and has cried out to God, but he feels that God won't forgive him. What should I tell him? Um, you tell him the fact that he feels sorry about it indicates he hasn't, he hasn't uh, committed the unpardonable sin. The unpardonable sin is actually uh, turning your back completely on Jesus Christ and, and uh, ignoring the wooing of the Holy Spirit. The people said that the spirit within Jesus was a demon, that he was possessed by Baals above the prince of, of devils. Uh, I mean, it was just a total spiritual blindness. But if, if your son still feels tender and he feels convicted, he has not sinned against the Holy Spirit. He's not lost his chance of salvation. It's all the time we've got. Thanks so much for being with us. Tomorrow we're going to meet a woman who used to be a baby breeder for a satanic cult. Woo! Don't miss that. Yeah. That sounds horrible. Though. It does sound horrible. All right. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. <laughs> Here at CBN, we see amazing things happen when we stand together. That's why we want to say thank you to the thousands of you who recently pledged to join the 700 Club. Your monthly gift makes it possible to bring crucial help to those who need it most. You help heal the sick, feed the hungry, and preach the gospel across America and throughout the world. You've brought health and hope to people in desperate need. And changed their lives forever. When Kitty was abandoned by her parents, she went to live with her grandmother in the middle of a garbage dump. They ate scraps of food from the dump and tried not to get bitten by the rats. That's when you built them a new home and set up a small clothing business near the market for Kitty's grandmother. You rescued them from hunger and fear. So please, watch for this mailing and send in your pledge. This year, millions will know the love and saving power of Jesus Christ. And that only happens because you were there.